We do begin with that breaking news. A multi-state manhunt for a convicted sex offender has ended in Spokane Valley tonight. He was found with a 15-year-old girl who had been missing from Lewiston since Monday. She's now in protective custody while that 36-year-old suspect is in jail. Krem 2's Kyle Simchuk had been on scene. He explains now how she was eventually found. Well, the Washington State Patrol tells us a citizen called 911 after seeing that maroon Chevy Trailblazer driving in Spokane Valley this evening. A short time later, a WSP trooper located the car on Trent and began to pursue it, then lost sight. Spokane Valley deputies picked it up in a Spokane Valley neighborhood near Park and Maxwell. Deputies say 36-year-old Jonathan Wayne Bowles got out of the car and started running, but he didn't get far. He was arrested outside a home in this neighborhood. He had no connection to any homes around here. Bowles is a non-compliant convicted sex offender and has multiple felony warrants out for his arrest for child molestation in Garfield County. Police believe he befriended this 15 year old girl. An Amber Alert was issued Monday in Lewiston when the two disappeared and you likely got that alert on your phone. Bowles was taken to the Spokane County Jail tonight. Deputies tell us he may be facing third degree assault charges for resisting arrest and charges for eluding police. Once he's answered to those in court here in Spokane, he'll be taken down to Lewiston uh, to answer for those Amber Alert and possible kidnapping charges. Reporting in Spokane Valley tonight, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. We are also learning more tonight about a murder victim found near Northern Quest in Airway Heights last week. New court documents say the man was not killed at that location, but rather his body was simply left there. The medical examiner reports 48 year old Jeffrey Hayes died from a gunshot wound to his stomach last week. Court documents say a witness actually saw a white car pull up and then leave Hayes body in that empty field where he was found. Police are still looking for suspects tonight. Well, as we take a look at weather, definitely got a break from the snow today, but more could be on the way depending on where you are. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick in the Outdoor Weather Center tonight, letting us know what the next 24 hours has in store. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty hectic 24 hours because we could just add fog, rain, snow, freezing rain, wind all to that equation. So let's try to piece this together one at a time. Let's start with the fog. It actually looked like it got a bit foggier from our South Hill studios. Still reporting about a quarter mile visibility out at the airport. And yeah, that fog starting to get a little bit thicker around Spokane County. The other thing we're watching is the rain and precipitation as a whole. Looks like just a band of showers, rain showers over the Palouse from Moscow and up towards Tico, but a bit more in the way of at least freezing rain or it looks like freezing rain around Coeur d'Alene and northward. But here's the issue is that or thankfully shouldn't be the issue for tomorrow morning is that our temperatures are actually increasing. We're up a degree as of this hour, expecting things to be about 39 degrees for tomorrow morning. So any snow or freezing rain might actually change over to rain by the time we hit tomorrow morning. But winter weather advisories for northeastern Washington and far north Idaho does indicate the potential to stay all as frozen precipitation that snow or freezing rain. So we're tracking all that pretty much for the next 12 to 24 hours and what's also going to be a windy day for tomorrow. So look for even more details coming up a little later in the broadcast. All right, sounds good, Thomas. Thank you. Spokane's iconic Davenport hotels are being sold. Local owners Walt and Karen Worthy signed a deal with KSL Capital Partners. The company owns some of the top hotels around the world. The Worthies stepped in to buy the historic Davenport and reopen it back in 2002. What is now a local landmark had been closed since 1985 and was nearly torn down before the Worthies stepped in and restored it. The couple went on then to acquire the Davenport Lusso, the Centennial, and of course build the Davenport Grand. The current managing director of the Davenport Hotels has been with the Worthy since the historic reopened. She will continue to manage all of those properties now for KSL. The Davenport Historic started 107 years ago. We have a great history, and as I, I, I've said this already, but this is just a new chapter. Well, you know, Louis Davenport had a lot of our story. Walt and Karen, had a few chapters in there and, and you know, we're going to turn the page and we're going to start, um, you know, th this this next phase and we're looking forward to it. The Worthies now plan to retire, but will stay involved in the Spokane community. They're not saying how much the five properties sold for. Hotel staff are being told their jobs are secure.
Paying for parking in downtown Spokane proving to be more difficult than necessary. It turns out a lot of people have been having problems paying through the Passport parking app. It basically allows you to pay for on street parking if you don't have change. Now, some people say the app isn't letting them pay at all, forcing some who don't carry change to then take their chances at getting a ticket. Shannon Orlando, for example, works at the Spokane County Courthouse and uses those meters every day. She says she's frustrated with the situation after getting a ticket herself. If their app isn't working and they know that it's 21st century, people don't carry change in there, then they shouldn't pay, be charging people parking tickets. Shannon tried to fight her own ticket with the city, but it didn't work. City officials are aware of the issue, but say payment in any form is still required to avoid a ticket. Well, you may have noticed some of your favorite apps or websites weren't working at all today, and that's likely because Amazon Web Services suffered a major outage today. Amazon provides cloud computing services to multiple governments, universities, and companies, even in the Associated Press. Now, the company posted an hour after the outage began that they had found the root cause and were then actively working toward recovery, but customers trying to book or change trips with Delta Airlines were having trouble connecting, people trying to use Instacart, Venmo, Kindle, Roku, and Disney Plus also reported issues. A federal judge has now blocked President Joe Biden's administration from enforcing its vaccine mandate. It was in place for employees of federal contractors. So the order came in response to a lawsuit from several contractors, as well as seven different states, including Idaho and Utah. It applies across the U.S. now because one of those challenging the order is the trade group Associated Builders and Contractors Incorporated, whose members do business nationwide. The U.S. District Judge in Augusta, Georgia, issued a stay to bar enforcement of that mandate nationwide. The judge found the states are likely to succeed in their claim that Biden exceeded authorization from Congress when he issued that requirement back in September. The Omicron COVID-19 variant has been found now in 20 states so far just in the last week. Here in Washington, it's still just the three cases from three different counties over on the west side. Now the UW Medicine Virology Lab in Seattle is analyzing those samples, hoping to learn more about this new strain. The first thing that we need to know and the first experiments we're going to do to address this is do current um, antibodies produced from vaccination protect against Omicron and ask if antibodies from people who have been vaccinated can actually neutralize the virus in culture. And if it can, then it gives us hope that we have vaccine protection against Omicron. The virus is being studied at a level three lab and will undergo a series of tests, one of which is testing those variants with blood samples from people who have already had COVID-19 to see if they still have immunity. And 60% of all U.S. citizens are considered fully vaccinated now, but cases are still rising, mostly in those who do not have the shot. In the meantime, both Merck and Pfizer are eyeing the end of this year for emergency use authorization for a COVID-19 treatment pill. An FDA advisory panel has already recommended Merck's version of a pill and will soon review Pfizer. And while testing is underway, health officials across Washington and around the country are urging people to get their booster shots. If you received your doses back in the spring, you now qualify to get a booster. To find an appointment near you, you can just use the Washington Department of Health vaccine locator and search by your zip code. All right, coming up, online claims about possible job cuts in the Spokane Police Department. When we come back, we'll verify if that risk is real. And also tonight, remembering the attack on Pearl Harbor 80 years later. We're sharing more when we come back.